Hi there, my name's Ian, I'm a PhD student at Sheffield Hallam University and this is the sixth episode in a brief series of videos I'm producing to help those of us who are writing extended pieces of work like theses and dissertations and using Microsoft Word to help us do that. Um, hopefully within this episode, as within the previous five, you'll find some features of Word that you might not have been familiar with, but which could really help with saving your time, making your life more efficient and hopefully a lot less painful. So this one, as you can see from my crude titling here, uh, again, I'm going to try to go for this in a single take, fingers crossed. Um, as you can see from the title, this is about internal signposting. Um, so that's those those little phrases that we use to refer to another part of the thesis or dissertation. For example, um, as I will discuss in section X, da, 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 da. so it's that intertextuality. Normally, in the past, I've certainly done all of that kind of thing manually, um, but that was within master's dissertations and assignments for those slightly shorter documents. Um, within the thesis, there's a pretty good chance that um, that will become more difficult because there are more chapters and more sections within those chapters. And it's quite likely that, this being the draft thesis, things will change subsequently. So if an, an additional section needs to be added, that changes the numbering system. We found in the last episode, if you, uh, if you watched it, that using an automatic numbering system can help with that. But what about the internal referencing? So if I referred at some point to section 5.8 or um, appendix 3, what happens if we put something in between there? Those internal references that referred to it may no, no, no longer be valid. It may be that we've put in an additional section. So the numbers have all changed. Well, we'll look at a way now, hopefully, of ameliorating those problems and making your life a little bit easier and helping automate those features and ensure that any changes which are subsequently made are accommodated automatically. So let's take a, a look. Um, let's jump to this section because I know that just there I've got some examples of the kind of thing I've been talking about. Once again, a reminder that this is very much in draft form, this thesis at this point. So there will undoubtedly be sections that need to be added or taken out, take out, need to be amended and so forth. So I'm probably going to be uh, using this internal signposting uh, process very much in the very near future. So here we can see I'm talking about um, two sections which are later within the thesis. If I remember rightly, it doesn't matter, just this is an example. This one refers to that particular section 3.2. So I could just type 3.2 in here and that would do fine. Unless between here and there, things change. What if that whole chapter gets shifted elsewhere? Uh, and that's quite likely, a uh, quite like, likely outcome at the moment. And similarly, this one here refers, if I remember rightly, to here, this section on assemblage. So, how do we automate this process? Well, it's done. You need to go, first of all, to the References tab. And within here, it's using a feature called cross-referencing. Cross so let's take a look at how that works. If I highlight that, just that single character, because that's all I want to change, um, and go to cross-reference, we've got various options within here that we can use. So if we look at the different ref different reference types, we've got, whoops, try that again, headings, bookmarks, footnotes, uh, figures, of course that might be useful when we've captioned our figures, tables and so forth, um, or numbered items. At least we've got that provided we've done as we, in the last episode, we've automatically numbered our chapters and section headings using multi-level lists. So that's a possible option as well. Um, but if we look at headings and go over here to what that heading is referring to, this is the item that will replace that particular character or even a word that we've highlighted. 
So will it put, do I want it to put in the heading text? Well, look over here. It's referring to this bit. Do I want this character to be replaced by 3.2 Actor Network Theory? The answer is no, I don't want the other full thing, but I do want 3.2. But there's an option I can choose for that. So if I choose the heading number, and then from this list of all the possible options, I scroll down to the one that I want, that one, and go insert, you'll notice that up here automatically it's inserted 3.2. You can you know that that's not a manual entry because first of all, if I hover over it, it pr actually puts a link in. So within the document, I can go straight to that. Uh, and if I click on it, you'll notice that it's highlighted in grey, unlike the other text around it. Now that indicates that this item within the text is a field code. It's a pointer. It's a reference, a cross reference. So before we go any further, let's do the same with this other character. That, if you remember, is going to refer to this subsection. So once again, if I go cross-reference, heading, I want the number again, but this time I want, come on, scroll, 3.5.2, that section. Insert, and again, that's automatically being done. So let's close that. And if I control click on that, that takes me to there. Or I could have clicked on the navigation pane, obviously. That in itself might be a useful feature. However, imagine now that awful situation that we decide between the supervisors and I that this preceding section needs to go. So let's highlight that and delete it. The numbering system has now changed. Instead of it being 3.5.2 assembly, it's now gone to 3.5.1. That gets a thumbs up because the automatic numbering's taken some of the heartache out for us. But if we go back to where that uh, internal signposting was, just here, hmm, that doesn't seem to have updated. Well, when I've said automatically, there is one extra step that you need to take. The fields don't update automatically until you tell them. So if, if you were doing this individually, you could right click on it and then go update field. And if I do that, woohoo, it's now automatically renumbered to take account of the fact that we've deleted a section. That's great. That's made our life easier. But what if we want to do that across the whole thesis? Have we got to search through it manually to find all those different uh, internal signposts? Well, the answer is no. If you do control A, which is probably a different keyboard combination on a Mac, or maybe different if you're using a, a Linux computer, but that's what it is on a Windows one. That selects all. So if you go edit, select all, you'll now notice that all the internal references are highlighted. And if we now right click somewhere else and go update field, it will update all the internal references across the entire document, including your tables of contents, remember. Let's just check that. Let's go to our table of contents. I think I put one in. There it is. So if we scroll down, we should find 3.5.1. That section is still in there. So once again, we go control A, right click, update field and that should do it and it has done within the table of contents and let's just skip back to there actually we've already made that change hadn't we so it updates everything across the whole thesis all of that is done automatically and that gets a big thumbs up from me um, there are also if i remember rightly so you can find an example yeah there's one um, oh, yeah, that was the tweet that I was talking about earlier on. Uh, I think it's okay to include, ethically okay to include, the first ever tweet that was sent from Jack Dorsey. Um, <laughs> if you disagree with me, stick it in the comments. I'm always prepared to engage in the debates about ethics. It's an interesting field which I love talking about. Anyway, so here we've got an example of um, a reference to an appendix, which is later within the thesis, obviously. 
So if I skip to that section, I'm just going to contract a couple of these and make that a bit easier to see. That's probably the wrong one to contract. No worry. Ah, haven't put any appendices in yet. Well, that's okay. It'll give us a little opportunity for a reminder about how we do that and how we um, title things properly using headings to maintain our internal consistency. So we'll just put in an extra page. That's Control Enter on the Windows computer. And then we'll put in our main chapter. Is it chapter the appendix section? Anyway, and then we'll have appendix one. So we've got a subheading to refer to. Um, or maybe we'll go appendix A actually, because this is going to get numbered in a second. So if we've got one, appendix one. Anyway, you'll see what I mean. So if I now click on that, that needs to be a chapter heading. So if I go to the home tab and show all the styles, you know, from the styles pane, uh, if you remember from previous episodes, I've chosen heading two to be my chapter heading uh, style and format. So if I click on that, you'll notice that's automatically added it to the uh, navigation pane and will also be in the table of contents when I update that. This is one level below that. So for me, that's heading three style. And again, that's been added in there, 11.1. You can see why I didn't want that to be one now. 11.1 .1 Appendix 1. Hmm. So let us maybe better. But there may be local regulations which oblige you to do things in a particular way. Check out your uh, policies and procedures for writing your thesis and dissertation. Okay, so let's try and just quickly skip back to that earlier section where Jack's tweet was. I think it's there. Is it there? There it is. Okay, so this, imagine, it could be any appendix, imagine this was going to be the appendix that we just put in, Appendix A. Um, I could just highlight that. And now if I go to um, References tab, Cross Reference, and I choose again a heading, and I want the heading number. right at the end. That will put in, hmm, watch what happens. Appendix 11.1 .1 is not exactly what I was looking for. That worked fine for sections when we're referring to sections, but what I actually wanted to say is Appendix A, because, well, the conventions are slightly different, aren't they, when you're referring to appendices. So I'm going to close that and I'm going to undo that take it back to there. So actually, I want that to say whatever the title says, which is Appendix A. So I'll highlight the whole thing so that the whole thing is replaced. Now when I go cross-reference uh, and I want it to say heading, uh, but, but, yeah, where are we? Scroll down. I want it to say Appendix A, so I'll take that out the heading number and say the heading text instead. And go Insert and keep my fingers crossed. Ah, voila. That's much better. So you can now see that that says what exactly what I want it to say. And if I go Control, click, it takes us to Appendix A. So that pretty much covers internal signposting. I've not referred to how to do figures. Um, that's a very similar process. Maybe that just requires another little episode just to show you how to do that. We talked about how to caption figures in the past. Maybe we'll put those two things together now. If there's anything in there that I've missed, if there's anything that you want to comment on, if there are any videos that I've uh, shown things that I've not covered yet, as I said, there's a couple more in the offing, so perhaps hang on to them. By all means, stick them in the comments below, and I'll be glad to get any feedback from you. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.